What is your biggest dream in life? Do you find your dreams too complex or unrealistic to achieve? Do you find it challenging to keep your resolutions? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode on my channel, Wonder Boho Book Club. Today, I'll be discussing the book "Think Small: The Surprisingly Simple Ways to Reach Big Goals." Written by Owen Service and Rory Gallagher. Owen Service is the CEO of Cock Co, honorary professor of behavioral science at Warwick Business School, and former MD and co-founder of the Behavioral Insights Team. Dr. Rory Gallagher is managing director of the Behavioral Insights Team's operations in the Asia Pacific region and is based in Sydney. In Think Small. Owen and Rory show how you can use behavioral insights to achieve your goals. Having worked at the world's first nudge unit, Owen and Rory learned how small changes can have a really big impact on just about anything, and also the importance of clear plans based on human behavior research. Think Small takes these approaches and converts them into detailed roadmap for success and prosperity. Before moving ahead, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Part One: How making small changes can have a big effect on our lives. We all have dreams. It's what motivates us and keeps us pushing forward when things get hard. For some people. The idea of a dream is to be rich and famous. For others, it's to be a star athlete or an actor. Dreams are what keep us going, but when those dreams come crashing against reality, it can be difficult to maintain that motivation and push forward through difficulties. The problem is that motivation is fleeting. It comes in waves, and sometimes we need more than just a little push in the right direction to keep going on the path towards our goals. We need something more sustainable, something that will help us get started and keep going when we are feeling less than motivated. For example, it's common to make a New Year's resolution that you intend to keep, only to forget all about it come the following month. Research has shown that people have difficulty sticking with their big plans. It's mainly because, although we always try our best to focus and think, staying focused can be tough. Our minds sometimes wander off, or we get sidetracked. We face constant distractions and temptations, and more often than not, we give in to them. Let's say you have been counting. Measuring and regulating the calories in your food on a regular basis. It takes a lot of focus to keep doing that for every meal you eat. Not everyone is perfect, and there are so many other things that can make our lives difficult. So it's understandable if you decide to give in from time to time. After all, eating a few unhealthy snacks while dieting. Won't completely ruin your progress. Every overeater deserves a good excuse. So the question is, how can we manage to stay on track and meet our goals? Well, this is where behavioral science comes in. Behavioral science can provide us with some useful techniques for simplifying complex situations and maximizing our potential. We can, for example, use the nudge theory, which states that small changes can help with bigger ones. It also postulates that we feel compelled to imitate those in our peer group. Part two: Pursue a single goal that will add to your well-being. Setting goals is a crucial step to achieving success in any area of life. Goals help us stay on track and make our lives more manageable. There are two types of goals: outcome-based and process-based. Outcome-based goals are aimed at achieving a specific result, like losing weight or getting a promotion. 
Process-based goals focus on doing things right, like exercising every day or eating healthy food. Setting the right goals is the first thing you should do if you want to think about changing your habits. For example, we tend to overestimate the impact of material possessions on our happiness. When we buy a car, we think that it will make us happy for a long time. But in reality, after one or two months, the initial excitement wears off and our happiness level is back to where it was before. On the contrary, it is more likely that going on vacations or spending time with your friends and loved ones will improve your happiness level. Also, studies show that people who spend money on other people are happier than those who spend it on themselves. Another thing to keep in mind while setting your goal is its achievability or attainability. Setting yourself a single goal is a great way to increase achievability. When you set yourself multiple goals, you are more likely to be distracted by other things and not focus on your main goal. Having a single goal makes it easier to concentrate on it and put your full effort into achieving it. This ultimately increases your chances of success. Having set yourself a single goal, you should set clear targets and deadlines for your goal. First, map out the steps that are necessary to reach your desired outcome. Then, assign a deadline for each step so that they can be tracked and completed on time. Part 3. Set simple rules and let the power of habit do the rest. It's not easy to follow a set of rules, especially when they are different from what you are used to. A lot of people find it difficult to stick to the rules, and research has found that complexity of the rules is the main thing that leads people to drop their resolutions. This is because it's difficult to keep track of all the rules, and people often feel like they're being punished for not sticking with them. This is why it's important to make sure that the rules are simple, so that people can follow them easily and without any confusion. For example, in a study, researchers found that participants who were given a rule-based dieting plan were more likely to fail than those who were given an intuitive one. The next step is to harness the power of habits to drive your behavior in the desired direction. Start by identifying triggers for your bad habits. Identify these areas in life, pinpoint where you are weak, and get started. Avoiding triggers can be tough, but once you know what they are, it will be easier to drop them. For example, if you enjoy drinking and smoking together, to quit smoking, maybe cut back on alcohol for the time being. Once you've got grips on your bad habits, then try building up new and more positive habits by putting yourself in a position where that behavior would be appropriate. For example, if you're trying to work out every morning, then set your alarm early so that you can have time for your workout before getting ready for work. It won't be easy at first, but if you maintain regularity, it will soon become a habit and working out will be as natural as waking up. A commitment referee is someone who monitors whether or not you have achieved your goal. Researchers have found that people who publicly commit to a goal are more likely to follow through on it. This is because they are more accountable for their actions and feel pressure to live up to their word. There are many ways in which this theory manifests itself in our lives. For example, if you announce your intention to run a marathon, you're more likely to train and prepare for the race than if you had not announced it publicly. As an extra incentive to stay on top of your commitments, you could offer to consult with a commitment referee for optimal accountability.
but you should be careful when picking a referee. For example, don't appoint your partner who is probably going to be lenient with the rules. A loyal friend or someone tough to you is a better option. Studies have shown that people with a fitness coach or personal trainer are much more likely to reach their fitness goals than those without a coach. Part 5. Use incentives to help you on your way. Incentives are a powerful tool for motivating people to do things that we might not otherwise want to do. Incentives can be used in all aspects of life, both personal and professional. Sometimes they're used as rewards for achieving a goal, but they can also be used to push someone towards a goal. The right incentives can help motivate someone to work harder or develop healthier habits. But how can you identify which incentives are best for you? There is no doubt that the introduction of a financial incentive can be a powerful motivator. It might even be enough to make you want to do something that you don't really want to do. However, money is not the only motivator for people. There are many other factors that motivate people, and there are a number of studies that show that if you're already motivated to achieve something, the introduction of a financial reward might even weaken your resolve. A study by researchers at the University of Chicago found that when people were offered a reward for doing something they were already motivated to do, they were less likely to achieve it than those who were not offered the reward. This was true even when they were offered a relatively low-value reward, like a $5 Amazon gift card. To set effective incentives, it's best to put something valuable at stake. This will motivate you to work harder in order to avoid losing something you value. For example, a study by the University of Chicago found that people would rather give up a reward than lose something, even if the reward is better than what they have at present. The experiment was set up with a choice between two tasks. Participants had to choose which task they wanted to do first. The first task would earn them $5 and the second would earn them $10. The catch was that they had to do one or the other, not both. The majority of participants chose to do the first task because although it was worth less money, they could keep it and enjoy it right away. The second task offered more money, but participants had to give up what they had already earned in order to get it. This leads to the conclusion that most people would rather not experience a loss, even if it means they could gain something. Thus, if you want to motivate yourself, forego the notion of replacing that motivation altogether. Instead, implement a system of incentives so that you are properly persuaded to enforce the motivation to achieve your goals. Part 6. Ask for help. Working with others instead of alone is a powerful motivational tool. It's often easier to complete tasks when you have the support of others. A study from the University of Virginia found that working in groups can increase motivation by up to 40%. The study also found that this effect was more pronounced for those who had been assigned to do the less desirable group. This suggests that people are not just motivated by the work itself, but by how they feel about their own position within a group. This is why it's important to surround yourself with people who share your values and beliefs. Humans are social animals by nature. We thrive on meeting new people and making new connections. We have an innate nature of helping each other out, and it's always motivating when you're with like-minded people. So, connect with friends and see how much farther you can go. Part 7 
Get feedback on your progress and use it as a benchmark for measuring improvement and growth against others. There are many benefits of getting feedback. Not only does it measure your progress and tell you how you can improve your skills, it also helps you identify what you are doing well so that you can continue doing it. It's important that the feedback be constructive and accurate so that it can be used for growth and improvement. The more specific the feedback, the better. Feedback should also be given as soon as possible after a task is completed because this allows for a higher chance of success. It's important to get feedback from people who are not your friends or family. This will provide a more objective opinion on what you have accomplished and where you should go next. Next, the author talks about the importance of healthy competitions in helping us achieve our goals. We are social beings that have a natural desire to conform to social expectations and compete with others. So, if you want your feedback to be even more powerful, try introducing a comparison with others. In a study, subjects were asked to solve a puzzle. They were then given feedback on how many puzzles they had solved correctly and how well they did compared to other people in the study. Subjects given this information subsequently solved more puzzles than those who only received feedback on their own performance. This shows that feedback that leads to healthy competition can motivate us to perform better. Part 8 Practice with dedication and experiment to find out what works for you. It's a common misconception that you need to be born with natural talent to be successful. Studies show that successful people commonly engage in focused practice to perfect their skills and become better at what they do. A study found that elite performers in many domains have practiced their craft for an average of 10 years or more before they reach their peak abilities. This is because the amount of time devoted to deliberate practice is the only robust predictor of individual differences in skill level. However, it is important to experiment with different approaches. You won't know what will work for you until you try it. For example, you should try different routines for working out to see what works best for you. You may find that you are more productive in the morning and less so in the evening, or that your productivity is higher when you work out with others. The same is true of writing, as different approaches will yield different results. If you want to write something more creatively, try listening to music while writing, or try writing while sitting at a coffee shop. If you want to be more productive, write first thing in the morning or at night before bed. Thus, being open and flexible will help you find the best approach. Conclusion If you want to be successful, it's important to focus on the small details that matter. By doing so, you will have a higher probability of nailing down bigger and more ambitious goals. Behavioral science is always revealing new insights into human thought and behavior, be it our craving for social approval or the way we form habits. Remember that setting small goals and then following through with them is an easy way to start making big changes in your life. So, think small and achieve big. Thank you for watching this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe. Your comments, likes and shares are highly appreciated. See you soon in our next episode.